learning how to make cherry crisp from frozen cherries is easy. For those of you who don't know, a crisp is yet another type of fruit-based dessert, but instead of having a dough that forms a crust, it has a topping that is very crumbly. It consists of flour, sugar, oatmeal, and butter, and instead of mashing it or mixing it together to form a solid crust, it's sprinkled on top. So it's a different texture, but it's really good. You can make a crisp out of anything, but I am using cherries. Here I have two cups or 16 ounces or 454 grams of thawed sour cherries, a one pound bag. If you saw my cherry pie video, you will know that there are two types of cherries, sweet and sour. The sweet ones are the ones you probably eat as a snack in the summer, Bing cherries, and sour cherries are very often used in baking. You can use sweet cherries in this recipe. I would just add one to one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice because just like strawberries, Cooked sweet cherries are not nearly as interesting as you would expect. So like I said, these cherries are thawed. And if you're using cherry pie filling for my 8x8 casserole dish, which is already buttered, you could use, I think it's a 21 ounce can, then just skip the filling part. But if you're using frozen cherries, here's the recipe for the filling. I have my cherries, to which I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar, which as I measure is 160 grams, six tablespoons or 50 grams of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of almond extract, which is in a lot of cherry pies and it's really good, don't leave it out, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Almost all crisp recipes, here I'll talk as I mix the filling. Almost all crisp recipes, whether they're apple crisp, blueberry crisp, cherry crisp, call for spices. So cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, things like that. So I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon to my cherry crisp. So now I'm just going to mix the filling and then once it is fully mixed, I'm going to pour it into my already buttered 8x8 casserole dish. As you can see, the cherry filling is now in the casserole dish. And I forgot to mention that I did add 1 8 of a teaspoon of salt to that. Now it's time to work on the topping for the crisp. Like I said, a crisp is a bit different and it's a crumbly topping that has a bit of crunch. So I don't know if you saw my Argentine style Dutch apple pie recipe that I did over a year ago, but it's kind of like that. So for the topping I have one stick of butter, 113 grams, also one half cup of flour, which as I measure is 75 grams, half a cup of light brown sugar, 120 grams, along with an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and half a cup of quick cooking oats, which would be 40 grams. I'm also going to add a quarter cup of chopped pecans, 30 grams, because I think it's gonna add a bit of crunch and it's gonna be really good. And in some cherry dump cake recipes, you see pecans on the top and I need to use those up. So they're going in. So what I'm going to do is I am doing this this isn't a bowl, it's not a plate. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm literally going to take the butter, and this is cold butter, and I'm gonna start by cutting it into pieces, into small pieces, and then I'm going to sprinkle the dry ingredients, the brown sugar, the flour, and the oatmeal on top of it, and then if you have a pastry cutter, use that, but if you don't, I'm gonna use a fork and I'm literally going to cut everything into the flour. That's going to make a nice crumbly texture. I just finished cutting the butter. All I did is I went through and cut it into squares and then I went back and cut the squares in half 
and then each half and half again. So each square of butter I cut into four pieces. Here's my butter. I'm just going to sprinkle on my oatmeal, my flour, and my brown sugar. Like so I'm going to take my fork, use a fork with big, uh, I don't know what to call that, prongs, big prongs, and just try to work everything together. I probably should have mixed the dry ingredients together first before I did this, so that's one of my mistakes. But you'll start to see that little pieces of butter are getting covered by the sugar and the oatmeal and the flour. That's exactly what you want. I'm going to add my pecans to this. Could you add some cinnamon to the crumb topping? I think you, I'm going to put some over there. I think you definitely could. I th think that, now this is my personal bias. I like cinnamon in fruit flavored things, but I don't like a ton. And I don't want to overwhelm this with cinnamon. But like I said, it is true that a lot of crisp recipes have cinnamon and nutmeg and allspice and things like that. But like I said, my personal preference is to have a little bit of cinnamon, but not a ton with fruit desserts. So I kept trying to mix in the pecans and everything. And I think it helped. I think that to make the topping for the crisp, you need, if you're using a fork, it helps to have more of a space in which you can lay everything out and really dig in. So keep that in mind. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Now I'm just going to crumble my topping over the fruit. My cherry crisp from frozen cherries just came out of the oven. It was in at 350, uncovered for a full hour. I wanted you to hear how crispy it is. This cherry crisp with frozen cherries was absolutely delicious. In all honesty, I don't ever remember having any type of crisp, so I really wasn't sure what to expect but I was pleasantly surprised. The combination of the sweet and sour fruit along with the sweet, crumbly, and crispy topping was absolutely incredible. This crumble topping was crispy in a way that pie crust isn't. I'm guessing because it had more of a crunch to it. It also had a nice butter taste because unlike my pie crust, it's all butter, not half butter, half canola oil. Although the cherries looked really juicy when I sprinkled the crumb topping on top, the crumb topping actually turned out very, very crispy. Although not all crisp recipes have nuts, I think that the addition of a quarter cup of pecans was definitely a great idea. I'll be sharing some other crisp recipes in the near future, and for those, I did half a cup. So honestly, I think half a cup of pecans or walnuts would be a great addition to this cherry crisp with frozen cherries recipe. Although I use sour cherries, I think you could use sweet cherries, but honestly, since the crumb topping has so much sugar, I think it's better to use a more tart fruit. However, if you're looking for a great new cherry dessert using frozen cherries, give this crisp recipe a try. This is the first installment of my red, white, and blue series leading up to July 4th, 2020. So stay tuned for more great recipes. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.